welcome back. Now I'm calling this one the Carnival Quadrant, just because of that quadrant dial. And I've already showed it off a few times before. It's actually the third of those four AliExpress watches with Miyota movements. And if you're not really sure what I'm talking about, I'll have a few links down below so you can catch up. When I've run across Carnival watches on AliExpress in the past, typically they're just tritium based dials and they all really sort of look the same. So it's nice to see that Carnival is expanding their lineup and this one definitely looks different than their other watches. In fact, I'm not sure I've seen one quite like it on AliExpress before. To me, it just has a real retro vibe to it, partially due to its simple dial and in large part due to its tall domed mineral crystal. And I do want to warn you before we really get into it that this is one of the hardest watches I've had to film. The domed crystal as well as its shiny black dial just make this thing really reflective. And those hands are just really thin, flat, and metallic. So just bear that in mind as we really start off with the dimensions. So first off, the watch is listed as being 42 millimeters wide, and it's exactly that, with this very, very rounded case. The crown isn't very big, so with the crown it's only 44 millimeters, and lug to lug is just 47 and a half. So overall, it's a very wearable size. Yet while I have no problem with a watch being 42 millimeters, here I think it's actually a mistake for a variety of reasons I'll get into. I think they would have been much better off if they had stuck to 40 millimeters. Now thickness is 13 millimeters, which really isn't too bad considering you have a nice domed crystal. Although it is worth pointing out that the Orient Bambino also has a very nice domed crystal, and its thickness is under 12 millimeters, at least for some versions of the Bambino. The watch is also pretty lightweight at just 67 grams, and at that weight you barely notice you're actually wearing anything. Strap width is 20 millimeters, so you're going to have lots of options and you'll see some of them here, but it only has a water resistance of 30 meters which to be honest is really kind of normal for a watch from AliExpress. I think we would all prefer more, but it's not really bad considering it's just a casual style watch. And price is usually around $80, give or take. The case is listed as stainless, but it doesn't really list the grade of stainless used. And as I said, this is a very, very rounded case. Not just from looking at it from the top, but also from the side as it's a very bowl-like case. It's very polished and actually reminds me a lot of the Guanxin Nomos Homage, as well as a few of the Star King watches. Which also means that this is most likely a top-loaded case for those that actually like to tinker with these things. Now one advantage of this case shape is that I do think it tends to wear smaller than it actually is, as the point of contact with your wrist is smaller than the top as it tapers down. And in some ways, the case here is also my first real negative towards this watch. In that out of those four Miyotos that I got, I think this one has the cheapest feeling case, and is more similar to some other watches in the $40 to $60 range. Now, really this is only $20 more, so it's not really that big a deal. And the dial here is much nicer than those other watches, so it does kind of make up for it. Now that's not to say that this case or the finish of it is bad for the price, it's just that I'm not really impressed with it. One of the other things I don't like on this case shape, and it's apparent on the other watches with similar case shapes as well, is how the crown just sticks out and sticks away from the case, at least when looking from the bottom. Now this does make the crown really easy to wind, but I think it does kind of get in the way of the overall case. The texture on the crown is nice, but I think the crown here does look a little small, at least proportionally to the rest of the case. Now on the rear we do have an exhibition case back, and it's a little interesting here. And before anyone asks, I really have no idea what IWE means. But the exhibition case back is secured with four small screws, but it's the crystal that really makes it interesting. Now I assume the crystal here is mineral. But when you tilt it and look at it with the light, you can see that it has some sort of coating. It's almost like an air coating as it does turn things a little purple or bluish. Now why they would put an air coating on the back of this, I have absolutely no idea. Although if it actually is an air coating, then they really should have saved that for the front crystal, as that domed crystal combined with that black dial just really reflects everything. 
Now, that said, the domed crystal is really nice looking, and I think it really lends to the retro feel of this watch overall. And I think it actually extends maybe about 3 millimeters above that clean bezel. And as you'd expect, the crystal is mineral, and that's really expected at this price. Domed sapphire would be nicer, but I think that would almost double the price here. Which all leads us to the dial, and I think the dial here looks really great with that domed crystal. Now, there are four applied indicators at the 12, 3, 6, and 9, and those help divide the four quadrants of the dial, with each of those quadrants having an alternating brushed pattern on it, which is either going to be circular or straight out like a sunburst effect. And that quadrant effect you can see at some angles, but I think the black version here is easily the less dramatic out of all of them. So if that's the main reason you're buying this watch, you might want to look at some of the other color variants. And I think the reflectiveness of that crystal also doesn't help accentuate that quadrant effect either. Yet when you do catch it, it is rather cool and eye-catching. And it's really the main reason I wanted to see this watch in person. I'm not sure if this is actually an homage to any specific watch, but I think it does have a slight resemblance to the newer Zodiac Olympus. And not just from the similar quadrant dial, but also from the shape of the hour and minute hands. Although the rest of the dial is very different from that Zodiac. Especially as here, you don't have hour indicators, and it's more of a minute track circling that four quadrants. And those minute indicators are just painted on. As I already mentioned, the hands here are really hard to make out with a camera. They're just these flat silver pencils that tend to reflect everything. And they are much easier to see in person, as here with the camera, you're just seeing the reflection of the black lens, which really doesn't contrast with that black dial. But I do think they are a little bit too thin for this dial, and that can make them harder to read with this watch, even in person. I also think they're a tad short, at least the hour hand is a bit short. And I think that's reason number one that they really should have gone with a 40mm watch here as I just think those hands would have looked better on a watch of that size. Reason two, however, is the day and date complication, which I do have to say that it is really nice to have a day and date on an inexpensive watch. But here, I think the date wheels are just a little too far into the center of the dial, at least comparatively. And I know this is where they need to be, but I think it just looks off. So if this was a 40 millimeter watch, I think those day and date could have just replaced the hour index at the three. And I think the overall design would just look better that way. Text wise, I do like what we see here. And I really like that cursive carnival logo. And it has a very, very tiny automatic underneath it, which you almost don't notice. And below that, the depth rating just above the six really pops in that red color just to give it a little bit of oomph. Although I do think that it would have been better if that color had matched the second hand, which is a little bit more orange. And I do have to say that the second hand here is easily my favorite part of this watch. It's just a simple baton, but it's very vibrant against that jet black dial. And I really just love the way it looks as it sweeps that dial. But unfortunately, it does have an occasional stutter from the Miyota stutter effect which is really reason number three I think they should have stuck with a 40 millimeter watch. The wider the dial, then the longer the second hand, and the longer the second hand, and the more likely you are to have a little bit of a stutter with a Miyota 8200 series movement. It's just really inherent in the design, and that stuttering is really just a protective mechanism, so it doesn't affect its ability to keep time, but a lot of people just really find it annoying. But it's really just something you have to be aware of, and sometimes it's not something you can avoid, and different movements are going to have it to a different effect. So I think if they really wanted to stick with a 42mm watch, then they really should have gone with a Seiko movement, and just avoided the issue entirely. Now, as for the design as a whole, well, I really like it. It's got this retro casual feel, and I don't really think it's a direct homage to anything. Yet it does share a few similarities to other watches, but even then it does have a nice unique feel to it. And again, I really want to stress that casual look is a real positive here. When it comes to watches on AliExpress, and especially those with Miyota or Seiko movements, there are just far too many dress watches. So it's really nice to see something different. 
Yet at the same time, I think the overall design would look better just a little smaller at 40 millimeters. And this is my last 40 millimeter point for those getting annoyed with it. While I do like that quadrant dial effect here, at least when you can actually see it with the black, I still think there is a lot of empty black space, and perhaps too much empty black space here. Now, as I've said before, movement-wise, we do have a Miyota, and I believe it's a Miyota 8205, and it's actually the more decorated gold version. But unfortunately, the 8205 is not one of the Miyota movements that's being upgraded with hacking. But otherwise, it's a good workhorse movement. It's got a standard beat rate, hand winding, and around 40-hour power reserve. And as always, accuracy really is luck of the draw. And this particular one is running okay at just about 9 seconds a day fast. It really could be worse, but overall it's not too bad. Which finally leads us to the strap. Which is actually pretty good for the price. I was really expecting the typical alligator style leather strap. But here, it's just this nice, smooth, simple black strap. It has a signed buckle and has some nice padding near the watch itself. The leather itself just has this really nice, soft, smooth feel to it. And I think overall, the watch wears okay with that strap. Now, while I think the watch does give a nice presence, and I really love that orange second hand as it sweeps, I do think the watch here does look and wears a bit tall. And I really wish they could have just shaved off a millimeter or so. But even with that, it is still quite manageable. And as I said before, the tapering of the case does make it feel a little smaller than it is. So that, combined with the 47.5mm lug to lug, I would say that this wears a little, but not a whole lot smaller than a 42mm. Either way, I think the carnival here does have a good look, and it's a look that I think would appeal to many. Which really explains that even though this watch came in third place out of those four, I've still had a lot of requests to finish this review as soon as I possibly could. So overall I do like the design, but I do think the watch could be much better than it actually is. And I think most of my issues really stem from that 42mm width. I think if they'd kept it to 40, that'd be much more ideal with what they were trying to do. Yet while I do like it, at least for what it is, I wouldn't say I'm in love with it. And I didn't really find anything that really spoke to me, like some other AliExpress watches have, that makes me want to keep it long term. So I'll eventually be putting this one up for sale. The bigger question, of course, is do I think this is worth the price? And typically these are running around $80. And for that, I do think they're worth it. It has a good look and a unique style among ultra-affordable watches. And if that style is one that appeals to you, then I think this is definitely worth taking a look. Just be aware that there is a chance of getting one that might have a stutter from time to time. With its size and that Miyota movement, it's just a likely possibility. Although just remember that it is mineral, not sapphire. And if you're really hard on your watches, something with a flat sapphire might be much better suited to you. Although I'm not sure if I've ever seen anything quite like this with a flat sapphire. And if I had to do it over again, I'm not sure I'd get this black dial version. While I do love the look with that orange hand, that quadrant effect isn't really very noticeable here. And I'd probably go with the gray or the blue version, or maybe even this teal. Anyway, let me know what you think about this Carnival watch down below. And if you've been waiting for that Reef Tiger, which is the fourth of those four Miyota watches, let me know that down there as well. It'll just help me gauge interest in it. And as always, if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Thanks for watching.